Hey everybody, I'm Damon Moore. I'm a lawyer, mediator, author, and I'm excited to bring you this presentation about uh, Texas conservatorship, uh, also known as child custody. By the time you finish uh, going through this seminar, uh, you should know a few things uh, better than the opposing party in your case. Uh, you'll know what it means to have custody of the child in Texas. You'll know what a judge considers when determining who gets custody. And uh, you'll learn a few other things along the way. So let's talk about conservatorship. I'm going to start by telling you that uh, in the streets, you hear the term custody used a lot. But that's not the term that's used in Texas courts. In Texas courts, we call it conservatorship. And uh, while it's on my mind, I'll also say that uh, in the streets you hear this term visitation used. But in Texas courts, it's typically going to be called possession and access. That's a topic for another video. In this video, we're going to be uh, focusing on conservatorship. So conservatorship is a term used in Texas to address the legal and physical aspects of sharing the children and managing the children's affairs. The legal and physical aspects of managing the, and sharing the children uh, include the following, schooling and education, medical, dental, surgical care, psychological and psychiatric care, and uh, religious upbringing, and the whole uh, list of other things that's, that's on uh, the slide that you can see under managing conservatorship. If you're a possessory conservator, you're going to get access to the child. Uh, you're going to get the right to inherit and bequeath assets, but uh, that's going to be uh, about the gist of it. The, the power or control over the, the children's affairs, as you can see, is uh, through having the list of things that fall under uh, the managing conservatorship side. Now, when we talk about conservatorship, it, it's important to recognize these two categories of conservators, the joint managing conservator and the sole managing conservator. If you're the joint managing conservator, then you're going to share control of the child's affairs with another person. That other person is usually a parent, but it doesn't have to be a parent. If you're a managing conservator who's not sharing that role with another person, then you're going to be the sole managing conservator. And if anyone else has any rights, that other person is going to be called a possessory conservator. Earlier, I kind of went through half of the list of the legal and physical aspects of sharing the children and managing their affairs. In the Texas Family Code, those things are also called, are often called rights and duties. And it's important for you to know that those rights are not always shared equally. For example, in some cases, the parents might share the rights to make the decisions about the child's schooling but not share rights to consent to medical procedures, or vice versa. You can be joint managing conservators uh, without having equal decision-making power. It's also important to know that uh, some rights are not shared. The right to designate the child's residence and the right to collect child support are generally two rights that are not shared. Let's talk about the right to designate the child's residence. In a case that has a child, the court will usually designate one of the parties to be the one who determines where the child resides. The court may require that the child resides within a particular school district or city or county, or uh, uh, sometimes you'll see language that says a county and surrounding counties or contiguous counties a particular state or country, or there might, be, uh, uh, there might not be any restriction. In my experience, this is one of the most heavily litigated aspects of a case. When thinking about the uh, parent's exclusive right to collect child support, there are two things that you should take into consideration. First, 
Judges tend to determine child support by looking at something we call the Texas Child Support Guidelines. Second, there are circumstances in which the court will depart from the child support guidelines, but you're going to have to give the court a reason to depart from the guidelines if that's what you want. If you need to learn more about Texas child support guidelines, then check out my YouTube video. It's called Texas Child Support Laws. I will put a link in the description section of this video. Now let's talk about how the court determines conservatorship. The court determines conservatorship by considering a set of factors that will help the court decide what is in the best interest of the child. A non-exhaustive list of those factors includes the desires of the child, the physical and, and emotional needs of the child uh, now and in the future, the physical and uh, emotional danger to the child now and in the future, uh, parental abilities, programs available to assist the individuals uh, to promote the best interests of the child, the plans for the child by these individuals or by the agencies that are seeking custody, the stability of the home or proposed placement, the acts or omissions of the parent, which may indicate the existing parent-child relationship is not a proper one, or any excuse uh, for acts or omissions of the parent. Now, Here's something important to note if you did not hear me say it earlier. The factors that I just listed are not exhaustive. Some of those factors may not be appropriate in a particular case. Other factors that I did not list may be more important. Also, undisputed evidence of one factor may be sufficient. You should also note that a parent's inability to provide adequate care for the child lack of parenting skills, poor judgment, and repeated instances of moral conduct may also be considered when looking at the child's best interests. If you want more information about issues related to conservatorship, then feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is available in the description. And if you like this video, then be sure to click the like button and subscribe. That is the best way to make sure that you get the information you need from me whenever I produce it. I look forward to giving you more information in the future. Bye for now.